Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 152. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. Oh my goodness. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxra, from beautiful Savage, Minnesota. I have survived this weekend, went to a cool con, Twin Cities Con, with my son. He has to go for his birthday. We had a great time. Good, good elements. There were so many cool video game and, and different themed merch. Didn't even get to go to the video game area. But our co-host, Mr. Mark, the Canardian Carabin, actually hosted a panel and met cool, neat people that are involved in the video game world. So, Mark, yeah. just give us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. So this weekend I did a con as well uh, called HalCon. Um and it, uh, oh, look at the Gengar. That's such a great badge. Uh, my badge is around here somewhere, but I'm not going to go grab it. Uh, so Halcon was great. I got a press pass, so I didn't actually host a panel. I had a private interview. Oh, um, I thought you did. Okay. A, no, like a, a press interview, which was really great. Private nice. uh, interview, press room, um, just a, a, an intimate sit down. So people will be able to listen to that in, in podcast form coming up as special um, Patreon first spotlights. So we'll talk about Patreon in a second, but if you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to test out the seven day trial um, because they're, they're coming up soon and then they're going to be released to the, the main, you know, absolutely public feed and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the people I interviewed were EK Johnson, who wrote um, among other things, the Ahsoka novel that I'm holding in my hand right now. Nice. Uh, she nice. also wrote the Padme trilogy, the tie in, um, tie-in novel for the Dungeons and Dragons movie, uh, which was a, a delight. Even if you don't like Dungeons, like I've never played Dungeons oh, and Dragons. Great. In my I, life, loved I loved that movie. So good. So great. Uh, and she was a delight to talk to. Uh, and I think maybe more relevant to this crowd listening, I talked to Jennifer Hale, uh, the voice of Fem Shep, um, Jean Grey in X-Men 97, uh, Samus, uh, we talked about Samus and her being uncredited in that role, but still being open for the phone call if Nintendo calls her for Metroid Prime 4. Is she open? If she not, you have to listen to the episode to find out. Um, we, yeah, we covered a wide variety of things from acting, voice acting, video game acting, all that kind of stuff. Um, they were two amazing interviews. It was a, a packed, busy, fun weekend. And, um, I actually did not hit the gaming floor there at all either. I did the, yeah. uh, some cosplay stuff, some vendor floor stuff. Um, and, and then the, the interviews, um, were just kind of a main focus for me. So, uh, look forward to those very, very soon, uh, especially for Patreon listeners. Yeah, I am, uh, hoping I will also have some interviews, Coming from uh, Twin Cities Con, which is uh, year two and in Twin Cities, um, I actually got a signature of the official Batman 1989 sequel novel that just came out, Batman Resurrection, from uh, John Jackson Miller. Hopefully, I will be interviewing him. He's done a lot of different uh, novelizations of different pop culture, which is really cool, too. So, man, cons are great. If you have a good time, I, my son wanted to go for his birthday, for his 19th birthday. We did that with his awesome. friend. They had a great time. Uh, my wife, we went to see a panel with Grant Gustin. He was amazing. So, so cool. if you've got a, a con in your area, no matter how big it is, it's a wonderful thing. Believe me, we did not have those when I was a kid. I went to a dirt con in Frankenmuth, Michigan. There were no people there. I just bought crappy comics. And yeah, it wasn't until uh, later in life, um, cons became a much cooler thing to actually meet cool people. Yeah. yeah. Merck, Merck, what was your first con you went to? Uh, CaperCon. Uh, we went okay. to the first one. Uh, my brother and I did a live recording of the warp whistle podcast. Mm. I think famous Seamus was there. Oh, wow. Asked a question. Okay. If I remember correctly, Seamus, correct me on that one. I know I met you at, at Capricorn and I, I think I'm pretty like 99.9% .9 positive that Seamus was in the crowd wow. for that very first Capricorn. Uh, and, and us doing that live now, that was, that was a blast. And I've been at almost every single Capricorn since there were a couple of years where it coincided with me traveling or being away, but every single time I can go to that one, I do. 
Um, and I was talking to some organizers of that event today. They're having their 10 year anniversary this year. Um, and I, I made a couple of suggestions and then got them in touch with someone. So we'll see what comes of that. That's uh, should be, should be cool. Very, very cool. 10 years. Wow. Life is passing us by at a light speed, Mark. It's kind of crazy. Um, well, we want to thank the folks from our Patreon Secret Friend Squad. So, Mark, tell the people who are awesome that make this podcast happen. Absolutely. You can go over to uh, patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite and join all of these wonderful people, including our besties tier, Derek Trevelyan, a.k.a. The Figure Dude, Francie, the official hairstylist of, um, I'll say SFU, but it's really just Charlie, uh, the Xbox Expansion Pass, and Charlie's Uncle Tim, as well as our friends with benefits tier, John Sedorf, Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, who is doing, they're, they're doing a, a fun uh, trivia contest or something like that with Charlie, I believe. He was just I hope they beat Charlie. I hope yeah. they beat Charlie. I mean, Charlie's so cocky. Yeah. He's like, I got this. I'm like, <laughs> I hope he gets like shown up and I'm like, and then he has to like redouble and do like a montage of himself boning up on trivia. So Charlie like has to actually earn it. We, we should probably be like rooting for the home team, but yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, you know, it's Phoenix sisters entertainment mop the floor. Uh, Brennan Myers, Corey and HD, uh, and Matthew Keel, as well as a brand new Patreon member, Kurt Krug. He's got connections. He is the newest member, uh, of the, the friends with benefits tier. Uh, we have to give him a video game power up. Absolutely. Kurt, uh, I finally met Kurt uh, at a uh, C2E2 this uh, last summer. He's a great guy. He actually hooked us up with our Al Jean interview, which by all means, it's out now for Patreons. Check that out. He's the one of the best uh, producers of the, the Simpsons, one of the heritage writers there. But Kurt is a great guy. Uh, he's always looking out for us. So he's been a big advocate and he wanted to listen to that interview and joined us along the way. So a video game power up for Kurt. I don't know if he's a video game player. Okay. But he loves Michigan State University, a college team. Uh, he loves, uh, you know, geek culture. So with that, he's a big uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. So, Mark, uh, a power up for Kurt. Um, see, I was I was gonna go until you said Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, I was gonna go based off that he's got connections. That sure. the video game power up would be kind of more of a real world power up where if he has a game boy, he always has a link cable. <laughs> Ooh. If he needs a link cable, he just has okay. it. It's just in okay. his pocket, in his bag. If someone says, Hey, does anyone have a link cable? Kurt's there. He's ready to go. He, um, he's, he's the man. That's who you want around. Okay, so he's got a connection. So just link cables, or would you say like he's got maybe a USB charger always on hand? So it's a little bit more, yeah, at least a little got bit all more. The connections uh, that you need. Okay, all Every, the cables. USB, yeah, he's good. Chargers. If you need, if you need a connection, Kurt's your guy. Video game. He's got a switch dock. He's got a mini projector. He's just got all the all the connections that you might possibly need. All right. I love that. Yeah. He's yeah. just like, it's like his infinite solid, bag of, of connections. I love that connection, everything. It's like the guy who has all of the cables, which would not be me. Cause I don't have like four tubs of old connectors that I think I'll eventually need, but he's always just got those on his body. So he doesn't actually have to make his wife angry. So very good. I like that. Um, I'll also go the other way that he always gets an act like his devices never die. They're always on like his controllers, right. everything else, his phone. It's always on like at least 5%. Mm-hmm. So it never dies. So it's like always goes to 5%. So it might get a little bit, you know, soft along the way. Um, but he's good to go for another 5% infinitely, which could drive some, uh, anxiety quite honestly like is it gonna go i don't know but maybe he's like i got this i'm always at five percent knows that's it the confidence level that he knows exactly that he's always got that 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 kicks in 
Exactly. Yeah. I'm at 5%, but I'm always at 5%. I would love to be that. I would always love to be at 5%, quite honestly. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So thank you, Kurt, so much for joining us along the line. And obviously, uh, you know, save, best, save the best for last, Mark. Yes. So we also, aside from our new member, we have to thank I think one of our most long time and, and definitely uh, um, amazing supporters that is our secret friend, super squad tier, Sean, Stella and Henry Nias. What, what can I say about that family? They're, they're amazing. So thank you so much. Uh, you can join all of those people for as little as $2 a month, get exclusive shows, no ads, early shows, discord benefits, all that kind of stuff. Again, as little as $2 a month. Um, if you feel like tossing it our way over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite, if you do not feel, or you cannot, uh, toss a couple of bucks our way, that is perfectly okay. I understand. I get it. Times are tough. Share us with a friend, share a link, share a YouTube thing, uh, follow us on all of the social channels and bump those numbers up a little bit. Um, all of that kind of stuff helps. We appreciate it all, not just the monetary donations, but of course, uh, you know, we always have to thank, um, all of those Patreon supporters, is, uh, because it's literally keeping the lights on in this place. So, uh, so thank you so much. Mark, I would appreciate if people just memed us. Like just took our faces, weird, weird like gifts of us, yeah. and make us viral. Do that. I'm, I'm down with that. We will love you. Yeah, 100%. Todd doing like weird like hand gestures. Mark like I don't know, you know. Keep it. Keep v- it vamping. Keep it like, yeah. Keep it like not terrible. <laughs> yeah. Don't put us on OnlyFans. Don't put us on like. Uh, yeah. That's, you know, don't, that's don't, don't, don't have a URL that or things. Yeah, no. Uh, Don't have a a URL that takes you to a porn site like uh, the Wicked Dolls for Mattel. Yeah, don't do that. What a fuck that was. That's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Uh, My company has some Wicked like promotions. Like we have some cupcakes and cupcake uh, pops. Thankfully, I looked. I'm like, oh, all the art does not include a website. Thank you for that. I don't want to be infamous and have us have to worry about that. So there we go, Mark. But we are now headed towards one of our favorite segments. At least it's mine. I don't know. Mark, I love it. you know, we've been at this for 152 weeks, yeah. uh, episodes actually, more than that. So do you like Buy, Rent, Return? Let's just I be do. honest. I do. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I like to get down in the nitty gritty, and sometimes I feel – Sometimes I feel like I'm letting listeners down when I'm like, I've played none of these games and have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, and then I just like pull something out of my butt and everyone's just like, that was the worst possible answer and everyone hates you. But luckily this isn't one of those weeks. So on those weeks, I love buy rent return because I feel like I can contribute and it's fun. Okay. If you're new to this podcast, buy rent return is all about, uh, going back to your video store, what movie, game, whatever would you buy? What would you re- rent just to explore? And then what would you return? So at this point, um, and I've updated the uh, key art, Mark, to include really four cool video rental spots. Uh, I, I'm still waiting for your like Canadian-centric like centric, like Maple Moose video stores. <laughs> Maybe, I, I don't know. I look up a, a, a very, excuse me, a very local... Uh, video okay. game rental shop called Game World. I could not find no no art of it. Okay, at all. It's been uh, this is a time okay. before the internet. So like Blockbuster was really uh, our like my family's main one after yeah. Game World and and like a couple of like mom and pop kind of you know video stores and stuff. But um, yeah, so like Blockbuster still has the meaning for me. That's good. Okay. So for kids who are there back in the day when you couldn't buy a game, you went to your video store and you said, hey, what can I rent? And, you know, for five bucks, can I play and hopefully maybe finish? If not, hopefully you put a save file on that game and maybe hopefully get the same game so you could go back to it. So uh, for this week, we're doing old school weapons. So I selected the Master Sword. 
the shovel blade from Shovel Knight, and the Castlevania whip. So, Mark, I thought I would take it old school, not like a weapon like you shoot, but just like a sword, you know, something where you could like create damage in some way from a a video game. You know, these these vary from like Link from the very beginning. Castlevania and Shovel Knight Mm -hmm. is a new game. So um, with that, let's go through the people who gladly participated in this in interesting ways. So I'll do the first one. Danny Diwali says, buy the Master Sword, rent Castlevania Whip, rent Shovel Blade. I still need to play Shovel Knight. Shame on you, Dan. Dude. Is all I will say. Dude. Hasn't played Shovel Knight. It's It's on everything. It's on everything. It's it's I played it on Vita. (laughs) Yeah, it has been really, it's on, it is on everything. Um, Yeah, that game is so good. Um, Even if you just play the base game, because I get it now from a standpoint of like, there is so much Shovel Knight and all of the DLC, like the, oh yeah, uh, what's it, Shovel Knight Dig and like, never and all that kind of stuff. Like, there's a lot and, and feeling like, where the hell do I jump in on this friendship franchise can be intimidating. So Dan, if that's you just play shovel Knight. skip everything else. If you love it, go back to everything else, but shovel Knight itself, the core first game still holds up is still brilliant is still, in my opinion, probably the best one that I've played the best example, oh, yeah. the best place to start. Like that's the one you want to go for. Don't worry about everything else right now. Just, just play shovel Knight. Absolutely. Well, Mark, we can put the same pain on Jose. He says seconded to Dan. Um, so shame on you, Jose play yeah. shovel Knight. So is he Okay. Has not played Shovel Knight confirmed or just just seconding that order? order? Um, I'm going to assume the worst because <laughs> that's <laughs> how I feel about people. I just assume the worst. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll take yeah. the, the see- Winter Gamer. What was that? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Um, oh, yeah. Buy the Master Sword. Been dreaming of being the one to pull it out since I was a kid. Rent the Shovel Knight um, shovel blade thing. Uh, because it just seems like fun bouncing off of enemies. Um, but would li- most, uh, but would most likely use it to get rich underrated yeah. digging, digging for treasure. treasure. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and return the Castlevania whip only because I have more fondness for the others. Solid answers. Mm. Sad. Uh, I will get to the very sad one that makes me sad. Uh, Luke lore by master sword, rent shovel, Return anything Castlevania? That's a lot of hate. Ooh. I don't wow. understand that, Luke. Okay, all right. Let's what are you doing there? Let's Return on, anything? Uh, I don't. Know. Did 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 like vampires hurt his family or something? I don't know. Hey. Is he a vampire? Yeah. He doesn't like Castlevania. He doesn't like Simon Belmont. I don't know. I think we need to have Luke back on the show and and really unpack this. I think um, so. We have a co op couch for a reason. It can also be kind of a therapist couch. I think. I think Luke kind of true, like chilling and and uh, you know telling us where Castlevania touched him um, might help. I don't know if everybody knows this, but I have a nursing degree. I did a oh. a, a psych clinic uh, rotation, so I'm probably the most um, prepared to go deep into Luke's psyche. So right. we'll see how it goes. Perfect. Yeah, let's let's get on that. Let's yeah. let's let's make him uh, have a, a session, and I think he'll enjoy that. He's also a teacher, so he's very vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will take the the Nias family's answer with I am returning the shovel, though it can be a powerful and versatile weapon. Clearly from the movie Step Brothers, <laughs> I just have to return it. All right. Uh, I am yep. renting the whip. Anything that Indiana Jones has is kick ass. I'm buying the sword. It is always amazing from Zelda to heavenly sword. Can't go wrong. So sure. Sure. sword from like, like the master sword, but like, yeah, pretty much any sword. You can't go wrong. I get that for sure. Yeah. 
it, it depends if you're looking at like, you know, the shovel knight, the shovel blade is probably the most versatile, like say, well, how often are you going to use a sword? But you'll use a, a shovel a lot. The whip, yeah. I don't, I mean, maybe the whip is just a fun thing to like break out at like parties. Hey, look at me, I'm whipping things. A sword, uh, you can't really bring out a sword at any time, really in a social situation. It's really got to be preserved. You don't want to be the guy that goes to a bank and whips out a sword. I mean, have you ever heard a good news story with a sword involved, Mark? Todd, yeah, you wanted people to meme you, and then like two minutes later, you said it's always fun to pull out a whip at a party. <laughs> <laughs> Honey child, um, yes. What do you ask? There we go. Uh, there yeah. we go. All right. Well, yeah, that's. Um, I'm going to move right on to Schloss Ritter, uh, who yeah. said, "Oh no, actually, that one's yours. Go ahead." Oh, by the whip, specifically Castlevania 4, omnidirectional version, so I can smack and grab things in a direction. That was the first whip game where you're just like w- doing like weird things where the whip is like just like kind of just going like an undulating thing versus just whip like that. You remember that in Castlevania 4 where it was kind I, of like a I, weird. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very weird. Uh, Rent Master Sword, who can say no to sword beams? That's true. I like that when you charge it up. It was very. Uh, you know, situational though, because you had to be full power to get the beam. Yeah. So yeah, you had to save it up. Um, but that often ends when you get hit, of course. And then shovel return shovel pogo jumping like Uncle Scrooge. And this one sounds found sounds fun, but quick retiring. I mean, that's like putting everything in a negative light. I'm like pogo jumping on your enemies. That's only yeah. the best thing ever, that's right? Great traversal oh, and fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah ton of fun um yeah, I, I don't mean, know all of these if you've ever swung a sword or uh, any kind of weapon for any amount of time your arm is going to get tired i don't know yes um omnidirectional undulating whips as you describe them i mean that's you, you know your your arm's going to get tired sword they're heavy you're like that that's going to be tiring so pogo jumping and digging are you going to get any more tired you don't seem to run out of stamina in shovel Knight, So I'm, I'm assuming that the, the pogo mechanism is, is fairly easy or, or fairly, um, you know, not non, non draining. So, well, you know, now it's that. for us to decide, Mark, it's, it's, yeah, we're going to have yeah. the final decision on this. So Mark, what would you choose? Master sword, shovel blade, or Castlevania whip? Well, for my buy, I'm going to share a disappointment from Halcon. Because I saw a fellow Halcon goer walking by with a an absolutely stunning master sword. Okay. And I said, excuse me, where did you get that? And she said, it was right over there, but this is the last one. And I said, I hate you a little bit, but please enjoy your master sword. And then I went into a corner and cried because I couldn't buy this beautiful freaking master sword replica that this girl bought. So Aww. I'm going to buy this master sword because I wanted to. Um, I will also rent. So you're using sword. the power of commerce to really make your dream come true. That's the stuff right there. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Telling me yeah. I need to buy rent and return something. I'm buying the master sword that I didn't buy last weekend. Um, okay. And just cause like the master sword's badass, and I kind of want yeah. like swords. I have lightsabers. Okay. I don't have any like swords aside from like some styrofoam swords. So if I can buy a master sure. sword to start off a sword collection, hell yeah, sign me up. Let's go. Um, I'm gonna rent the shovel blade because it's a shovel blade. That's awesome. Um, it is a sword. It is a shovel. It is a pogo stick. It's versatile as hell. I probably should pick that for my buy. But I mean, I have a link tattoo. I almost like I wanted to buy a, a master sword this weekend. I can't really. You're only so practical. It. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I got to go with my gut here and uh, return the Castlevania whip. Just because um, I don't like whips as much as I like swords, and the other two are more sword esque. So, Indiana Jones, as much as he's an idol of mine and one of my favorite franchises, you know, the 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 whipping is 
is not so much up there as far as the adventuring goes and the, the, you know, um, grave robbing and that sort of thing. Um, so there, yeah, the archaeology aspects of Indiana Jones interest me more than the whipping aspects. Um, I know that's iconic to his character, but uh, I also, you know, if I had to choose an Indiana Jones uh, accessory, I'd probably go hat before whip. So I'm still going to return this. Yeah, and keep the hair. Is- you got to keep the hair dry. That's really important. Yeah, work. yeah. I mean, if you've ever been traversing through a forest or or any kind of uh, desert, you want, you want protection for your head. You know what I mean? You want, you want some shade. You want some dryness in the rain. Um, Look who you're talking to, man. You really have to protect your head. <laughs> I, you don't want to sunburn I, in the desert. Wear a hat. No, no, no. I mean, well, I mean, unless I just want to blind people with a reflection off my forehead, like you see right now, um, which could be an offensive weapon. Holy crap. My light is, we're both having crazy issues tonight. My, yeah, it's going about to die. Oh, well. okay. Out. Well, uh, I may have to plug my light power cord in as I vamp and do this because it's very weird. But ba, 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 ba. there we go. I made there a pause there the show we go. for anyone listening and yeah, wondering there we why go. my light went nope. out and then nope. came back. Um, Todd's, Todd's Mark's got a fire in this house because of his light. I'm getting like uh, seizures because of my light uh, going crazy. So the show must go wrong. I mean, on. <laughs> Absolutely. YouTube. That's why we do this is for the hijinks. Uh, so Mark, uh, despite how much I love you, uh, definitely wrong um, in all of these, but you don't have a cat. You don't have a cat. So when you got a cat, I tell you, man, a whip is essential because it not only is like offensive, you can use it to like traverse like cliffs and things like that, but you can also use it to entertain your cats. Like oh, put it okay. on the ground, move it around. So I'm thinking like yeah. utilitarian. It's a uh, offensive weapon, but it's also for traversal. So kind of nails all three. And you know, if you think about it, Simon Belmont in the picture I've got, he's got like a uh, a morning star on the end of it. It's been used yeah. for different things. Yeah. It could be leather. It could be chain. So if I have the ability to like change out like the connection of the whip. I mean, I'm talking about multi-purpose here, too. So I am very into the whip, which just sounds horrible. Once again, Mark, don't. <laughs> I'm into the whip. Ah, yes, there we That's go. going on a T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. Seek Friends Unite. It's not a dating site, uh, as we used to say. Uh, <laughs> then I'm going to the shovel blade because... I need a I need a shovel in my life. I've got to do gardening. I've got to do things. I've got to shovel doggy do uh it just happens but i also need to uh defend myself and i also need to traverse it's like a pogo stick and how much fun is that i need fun in my life and i need traversal so i'm gonna go with that so i think people would look at a shovel like that look like that with that cool handle they'd be very envious because you know there's a lot of cool swords but how many cool shovels are there mark one that one exactly unless you think of like mystery men there's the show there's basically i think it's the yeah, shovel a couple of good shovels yeah yeah there's a couple but, i mean this is the best this is the shovel yeah. so i mean you could be another sword or you could be the shovel so i'm all in on the shovel uh for shovel blade i actually have his amiibo yeah take My that amiibo to the bank yep. yeah it's great. Uh, it's kind of broken, but I make it work. So if anybody wants to buy it for me, uh, so maybe I can get a good one. I don't know. That might be one of the most valuable Amiibos, as far as I know. Don't know. Uh, Master Sword. Um, Link doesn't even like his Master Sword. It always breaks. It always like <laughs> degrades. He doesn't take care of it, Mark. It just feels like the Master Sword is... Um, it's never really regarded as like a great thing until you need it and it just feels like you get lost behind. So I think that like it's just it just needs a little bit more regard, but you know, it is a cool weapon. But I mean I can't brandish a sword in my yard to do like yard work. Unless like I guess I'm powering it up and do the like the spin to like do like mowing? Really? I don't know. Have you tried it? Uh no. I, that's okay. definitely a good use case, though, for the – the yeah, I think that's – Okay. If somebody can show me that, that it works, and maybe I change my opinion on the utilitarian of this magic sword, it, it masters sword. It's really cool, but once again, you know, 
I mean, show me how I can use it in, to make my life easier is That's what right. I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Very, very good. This is a good conversation. A little controversial. We need a couple of people to revise their opinion or basically I really state why they feel the way they do because some people's opinions are just trash, but I won't say who. Um, let's move on, Mark, um, to what we've been gaming. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, am I seeing some new games? Uh, you're seeing a new game and then a, a very game. old game. Yeah. Oh, 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 so it's not brothership. No, okay. I was confused. I have not, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll get to that one. First off, I want to talk about Mario okay. Party Jamboree because this is the best Mario Party game easily in a very long time, maybe ever. It, it has so much going. I've played so much more of this game uh, over the last couple of weeks and it is delightful. Um, Finn and I have been playing the paratroopa flying mode, which actually has you stand up and flapping your wings and like trying to fly things over. There's like a crazy taxi style mode where you taxi characters around, um, through like, like flying through the air. And, uh, and then there's like a flight battle mode where you kind of just steal like flying things. It's not like battle mode, like Mario Kart, where you're like throwing shells and stuff, but like they call it battle mode. Um, but there, there's also there's like a rhythm cooking mini game section. There's just like the normal mini games. Then there's the boards. There's another thing where you like work through the boards and get things to decorate your place. Like there is so much to this game, and all of it is so good. Um, it just yeah. It the the only downside from this game I can I can think of so far is the restrictions to online multiplayer, but hasn't really come up aside from like my brother and his fiance wanted to play with us, but you have to have like four copies of the game and four switches and all that kind of stuff. You can't do like two people on one switch and two people on another switch online that we've seen so far for like the regular Mario party mode. But um, otherwise, holy crap, this game is good. Have they fixed like the... Ah, uh, do your best you want, but it's going to end with like, did you land enough red spots? Is yes, it they, they have set? Okay, good. Yes. So you can leave that on if you want to, and occasionally, yeah, you can get someone who just lucks out with those ending things. That has broken a couple of ties that we've played so far because. You never know who it might be, who lands on the most red things, who gets the most mm-hmm. coins, who wins the most mini games, who does this random thing, who does that random thing, who had the worst luck, who had the best luck. Like it's all over the place. So you can actually, at the start of the game, get rid of those and play in like pro mode. So it's all about who actually gets the stars on the board. Duke it out, battle it out on the board, play the mini games, collect the stars. No bullshit at the end. Just who wins, wins. That is it. Um, so yes, they have fixed that 100%. Good. That's good to hear. Yeah. It is it is really good. They've thought of everything. They've made seemingly everyone happy. Like It is just an incredibly solid Mario Party game. It is, it is Mark, so good. I put a link into the chat because I'm like, how many Mario Party games have been there? So when I look at it, the first Mario Party game was on the Nintendo 64, came out in 1998. Since then, Mark, there have been 19 Mario Party games, which is just crazy. That is. Do you know what the first Mario Party game for mobile was? Mario Party E. It's a card game from the e-reader. Wow. In 2003. But it's amazing how many Mario Party games have been on like the 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 like the 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 DS, the 3DS. It's kind of crazy. That's a game that you feel like that's a game you'd play in the big screen, but it's mm-hmm. amazing how many they have. So it's it's quite a franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Like and the 3DS one was solid. Like it was it was fine for what it was, but yeah, it's definitely like a big screen party kind of game for me anyway. Yeah. Um but this is it's such a great game, man. Like it's it's 
like Finn and I tonight before bed, he was uh, like before he went to bed, um, that we were just, we were flying around and then oh, we were yeah. doing, um, there's, there's another mode where you have to work together and it's like, it's like overcooked junior. It's not oh, like food okay. based, but like, sure. Uh, you know, you have to, one person has to like tilt his controller this way and the other has to like tilt it that way. Yeah. And you have to basically pass a ball together and work to get it from one end to the other. And you get three balls and it unlocks like an item. This is where you uh, decide whether you want a child or you want to make them go away. Uh, the yeah. three of us, the three of us were oh. playing it last night and mm. it was so much fun. Everyone was screaming, <laughs> including Finn by the end That's of it. That's good to like, hear. No, don't do this. Oh no, don't do Oh, why'd you hit it that hard? Oh, why, you know, it was so good. And that's good to hear. I'm like, I'm sure there's modes that I'm forgetting now, but like, it is all so solid and there's still many games Great. that I haven't played. So, um, so really, really good. Uh, the second game I'm going to talk about is I did buy Mario and Luigi Brothership. Okay. Um, Thursday night and then worked half a day Friday and went up to this con and yeah. didn't play a damn thing all weekend. Aside from the, the SP, um, I didn't really touch my switch. Um, so I haven't played that game. I haven't looked at a single frame of that game, but in order to get me in the mood to play that game, I went back and played Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga GBA game. Yeah. Um, first in the series. I never played any of the these game. games. Oh, okay. This yeah. is a good one to start and it's on Nintendo Switch okay. Online as well. Uh, when okay. it dropped on Nintendo Switch Online, I played a little bit of it, but have not really put the time into that game to show it the love that I think it, it needs. Um, so that is where this thing has been great. I was able to just nice. fire this in my pocket, in my bag, take it to the con with me, um, play it in between, play it at night and that kind of stuff be, you know, just while we were traveling and whatever. Um, so again, great device to have with me. I wasn't afraid to throw it in because it's, it's protected because it's a clamshell. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been playing that game and it's, it's been delightful. It's, it's weird. It's quirky. It's got fun offbeat humor and I think from everything I've read and seen, Mario, uh, Mario and Luigi Brothership has that same kind of humor and, and whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into that game. I got really deep into Superstar Saga over the weekend in the last like week or so. Um, and I love it. It's, it's really, really good. So I'm going to dive into um, Brothership probably this week. But going back to play Superstar Saga was amazing. So whether you have an emulator device like this one or a Nintendo Switch Online or a 3DS because they did a remaster for 3DS or the original GBA, wherever you play it, that game is delightful. Go check it out. So the the Mario & Luigi games, it's a turn-based combat game, right? That's yeah. where it means. But the also part is you're playing with Mario and Luigi and you're kind of doing some turn-based like platforming and moving yeah. and things like that too, yeah, right? Like, like, so whoever's in the lead and you can swap back and forth okay. between Mario and Luigi um, because they each have similar but different moves. Um uh -huh. So I'm forgetting which one in superstar saga, one of them um, you do like a brother move. So like if Mario's in the lead, I think it's a high yep. jump and mm -hmm. Luigi kind of jumps and then you both jump up really, really high. Okay. Um, Luigi's in the lead and you get a corkscrew spin that kind of helps you go further distance rather than okay. height. Um, yeah. So there, there's that kind of thing, but yeah, absolutely. So if Mario's in the lead, A is to make Mario jump, B is to make Luigi jump. So you have yeah, to think that's about cool. that when you're traversing. Um, every once in a while, it gets really frustrating. And I think that's partially due to GBA graphic kind of things, not not really sure. being able to like telegraph um, where a platform is exactly or show enough of the screen because you know it's a smaller uh -huh. screen i mean it's uh, like three and a half inches if that or yeah, smaller so like, yeah you know, sometimes you're kind of like 
oh, I hope I land on the platform and you miss it by this, yeah. you know, a pixel and you fall down, you have to traverse back up the mountain and then go yeah. across and whatever. Um, so sometimes it's a pain in the ass, but for the most part, the traversal is fun. Um, a lot of the A and B mechanics controlling each brother independently work their way into battles too. It's not just traversal. So in a battle, the 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 enemies that you fight will often telegraph which brother they're going to attack. Okay. So let's say for a dry bones turtle kind of thing, um, depending on which way their head spins before they attack, you know, they're going to attack okay. Mario or Luigi. So if their head spins um, horizontally, that's a, a Mario attack. If their head spins, you know, vertically or Down. whatever, yep. uh, they're going after Luigi because and it's the, where they're kind of like relegated to the, 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 the horizon. Kind of yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes it's, it's literally just, you don't know until you get hit and you have sure. to get hit a couple of times to realize like, Oh, that's the way this enemy is going to telegraph. Yeah. And it's a lot of pressing either a or B to react. Right, uh, yeah. You know, for the right brother, but also at the right mm-hmm. timing, because some enemies, um, if they start their attack further back, it's going to be a slightly different uh, time to counter attack than if they start the attack closer to you. So there's, yeah. there's, there's a ton of strategy to this game that make it not just like, which move have I, am I picking for the turn-based strategy? But there's also a lot of like the defensive strategy of when can I counter this? When can I defend? When can I block? How do I block? What's the timing on it? Like it's, it's, um, it's a very, mechanically deep game it's it's really good and it just keeps growing and growing as you go on and there's so Mm -hmm. much more to like keep in your mind so i think if you put it down for a little bit you're like you know pick it back up and you're like okay what the hell does this enemy do exactly does that look yeah you gotta refresh um, yourself yeah and that's why i started this save fresh 100 from Mm -hmm. the start and i've just been really plowing my way through it because i know i had an old save i had that save on the on the switch I was like, screw it. If I'm going to have this device with me, I'm going to wipe it. I'm going to start a new save. And uh, and it's been really fun. Very cool. Because I know Brothership, when I, I originally was going to get it, and then I saw the reviews that it's like 35 to 55 hours. I'm like, ooh, mm. that just seems weird that it would be that, that long. Yep. And a lot of the things made it feel like this is a really a – mario focused game and it doesn't really incorporate like you said the mario luigi it feels like it's more mario with luigi but he's more like an npc than a prime companion so i'll be curious what your thoughts are on that game but when i saw it i'm like that's too much i want i need like a 15 to 20 hours mario rpg i don't need a 55 hour one that's That's weird star saga was it's about 18 and i'm a little pro- probably at this point a little bit over halfway through okay um if not more um so i'm you know, i'm feeling good with that time i feel like i'm okay. progressing at a pretty decent clip yeah. uh 35 hours is going to be yeah that's going to be daunting it's um, weird that they would go that route just seems like it's their audience and maybe it's like hey we want you just to be on your switch and don't do anything else cuz i'm like so uh I think they're kind of screwed uh, with, with the amount of amazing RPGs on switch. Yeah. I think if you don't have something that's clocking in at 30 to 40 hours, so weird minimum. Yeah. You're kind of screwed. Like, especially asking full price for it. You look at that and then you can say, okay, well I can play, uh, Dragon Quest, a Final Fantasy, or this, that, Xenoblade whatever. Chronicles Xenoblade. X, which I think is coming. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, just, just throw a Persona Five, which I think is on Switch now, which is like yeah, a like, 185 hour game. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, so, which is yeah, just throw, weird because it's like that, that's it. It's, okay, you know, yeah, you throw a dart at the eShop and you're gonna hit an amazing RPG. That's but Mark. Like, I, I guess the Pokemon games that can take, you know. Is there like is there like waifus and 
uh, what is it? Uh, what's the other thing for daddies in these games? Zaddies or what do they call them? Like the kids. That's where they get off because they love like the relationship and things. Mario ain't romancing anybody in this game, guys. Come on. You don't need 25 hours of like courtship with Mario. So yeah. come on, Nintendo. Yeah. Don't, I, uh... don't get baited into that. Just make a fun game and don't make it 55 hours of is Mario going to like date Boo? I don't know. Could be cool. I yeah. Mark, don't think that's the direction that they took, but I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to be. You're open to it. I, Mark um, is open to full on Mario waifus and yeah. And was it Bowsette? Cause there was, there's a lot of hungry yeah. Nintendo fans that want Bowsette. And what was the, uh, what was the like arms character that people just like Twintel freaking out or, Oh, there you go. See that, that, yeah, Nintendo fans are very horny, okay, and they just are waiting for Nintendo to deliver on that promise, Mark. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I really do. I with <laughs> dating dating sim, uh, notwithstanding, I I think Nintendo. I would imagine that would be the reasoning, like charging full okay. full price for an RPG in a sea of great RPGs. Sure. Um, I would imagine that would take some some padding. Uh, we just learned about the the switch being you know so like the the pokemon games on switch selling so so well yeah um that it's it's tough because you can for the exact same price let's say if you're comparing two rpgs for the exact same price you can get a 150 hour pokemon adventure or an 18 hour mario game like they have to pad that up to like you know 30 so 35 weird. 40 like it needs to look competitive from uh, how many hours and am I, am I going to get out of this uh, kind of perspective? And it, it sucks because a lot of times you don't, I always hated that because you don't go to a movie being like, okay, here's the price of a ticket. I'm going to go to a three and a half hour movie to really get my money's worth. No, people are like, why is it four hours? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I have so much entertainment in my life. I don't need things to stay out, out, outstay their welcome. I just want to enjoy the experience while I'm there. I don't need more of it if, if yeah. it's not valued. So yeah, that's, exactly. it, it's, it's an opportunity for probably making you know, your time matter. Because Mark, as I know with you, I'm is not on your side with anything, right? Never. Because there's an Assassin's Creed game coming out in February. And do you need a new, and you're probably getting a new Pokemon in January too, to make you insane. <laughs> yeah, so there probably. you go. My, yeah. With my luck, Let's give me a, a new Pokemon yeah. and, and Assassin's Creed will drop on the same weekend. You know what? It, it's bound to happen. Well, very good. And you know, yeah. Enjoy the games where they play at Nintendo online is a great way to play these games. Um, but yeah, uh, check out Brothership if you're interested as well. Um, for myself, I've been struggling to find the game that has connected me to a console. I've just been really, I've been playing a little bit of everything, a little bit of COD, a little bit of uh, uh, Space Marine 2. I did play a little bit of Echoes of Wisdom and quite honestly just did not grab me, especially after everybody heard, gave me their feedback. I'm like, oh, it doesn't sound like it's a must play. But Dragon Age... The Veil Guard, Mark. I have dabbled in Dragon Age and really have not gotten into it, but this game is speaking to me so hard. Uh, this is a Bioware game. They have not had one since Andromeda uh, in five years. Um, I believe, let's see, I'm trying to think beyond that. It was, we did get the Mass Effect Legendary Collection, which gave a people a little bit more uh, promise of where Bioware is going. But before that, we got Anthem as well. Uh, so this is like uh, Bioware saying, hey, we're still a good company. We can make cool games. Um, I'm not prescient about Dragon Age where I'm like, it has to be a certain way. It has to be a certain like style of game or it has to be um, a specific viewpoint or be like uber dark or anything. Um, so Dragon Age the Veil Guard is essentially the uh, the most uh, modern game within this franchise. We had Dragon Age Inquisition, Dragon Age 1, Dragon Age Origins, and Dragon Age 2. So it's a weird 
group of games. There's been anime and things like that too. I've enjoyed the games. They've always had an issue where I'd always fall off, but Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, I'm really enjoying. And it feels like the most Mass Effect Dragon Age game of all time. You're essentially uh, brought into this game like a movie where you're seeing it 30 minutes in, Mark. It feels like you're brought in by this dwarf, Varric, who's part of the Inquisition, who says, I need people to recruit to do a mission to take down a guy uh, who is um, Valen, who's a uh, elder... Uh, elf who essentially is almost like a god we need to take him down because he's about to break reality and allow uh some really bad stuff to happen so we're recruiting like a thief and all these people to bring in and take him down so that's where the game starts you're like oh wow this is crazy i feel like i'm in the middle of a movie and you do it and you get to select your character so i picked basically a elf who's part of the gray wardens who's kind of like the it's almost like a group of people who are trying to do the right thing, maintain order, but not align to like a government organization. I've got red hair. I'm an elf. I'm beautiful, Mark. Um, I have abilities to be a mage, but I can also be offensive. It's really cool in regards to what you can do. Um, I'm really enjoying the game and where it branches off. This feels like Mass Effect 2. Did you play Mass Effect 2? Yes. Okay. So you remember it was all about assembling the team. This is what this game is. It's all about assembling the team and forging relationships, checking in. Hey, uh, how are you doing? I'm not really checking on you because I want to romance you, but I really am. Uh, It has a lot of those instances where it's really interesting. You're doing a lot of companion missions to kind of uh, look into their past and bring them closure. Uh, You'll get things from it, but there's also a, a modern path. There's also alignment with missions that are tied to like um, different organizations, which is fun. So you can like play, do all the missions. You can do all the missions you want, focus on the main path, but I'm really enjoying it because I'm flirting. I'm doing the wrong thing. And then I can't flirt anymore because they're basically like, I'm upset. I don't want to carry this relationship forward. Um, It allows you to have any type of relationship you want, whether you're straight, gay, whatever, which is fun. So I've kind of focused on like, I'm an elf with redhead. I like a mysterious lady. I like a elf lady who's like into tech and we're having a good time. And I'm also worried about a griffin that I've got to raise, and it's very fun. And I'm just loving the game. It's so much just fun. The combat is really great. It's real time. And But in the long time, when you pick your crew to go through different missions, you hit L1, and then you can choose, like, um, like compounding abilities. So, like, you can pick, like, hey, your guy does, like, some fire bolts. And if we get another person, I select their power that does fi- uh, ice bolts. Combining the two is, like, synergistic, which is very fun. And you can slow down the combat at any time to do those your own abilities as well, which is fun. So I'm really loving the game. It's got really pretty much, like, Mass Effect, where you pick the, the conversation wheel of, like, it shows you, like, fist or heart or cry and things like that which but it also then when it says what you picked it's also nuanced it's not exactly what you picked so it's very much like new mass factor which i'm like loving to pieces so i'm not sure how long this game is but i'm just loving it to pieces mark it's it's got me it's got me i needed a game like this Uh, and i love it a lot of people are complaining because of the art style the art style feels very much like a a stylistic almost like if if um Pixar did like a fantasy movie. It feels like that. And I think people are putting it the wrong space where they feel like it's dumbed down. It's not dark and grim dark, but I'm like, I like that because they've got some expressions. They're not all like dour. So I like it. Um, Yeah. I, this is a, it's such a, a, seems like a divisive game. We just talked about Mario and Luigi brothership having some kind of like all over the place maps, but this were uh, all over the map uh, reviews, but like this one's the same, like 82% Metascore critic review right now. Uh, 3.8 user review getting completely bombed for having yeah. like woke agenda stuff. 
Um, which, Mark, I could date a dude. That's just yeah. the worst. Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, d- some of the things that I've read continuously brought up are being punished and having to do things for like misgendering someone. Um, really? It, yeah. It is, is like part of the game like that, that has come up so much that it seems like it's every two seconds you're, you're doing pushups for saying uh, he instead of she or they. I have not gotten into a gender naming discussion in my 25 hours so maybe so, people have an agenda maybe uh, yeah i, I wonder gee mm. that may have been what i was getting at todd um okay <laughs> yeah here like i hate these kind of review so weird bombs. It's i do same too thing with the acolyte if you didn't like the acolyte because you didn't like the acolyte that is fine like after you yeah. watch it you were like that isn't for me that sucked it's not exactly like you know my kind of star wars that's cool I had issues with the acolyte too, but like not liking it because like the twins had two moms or something is such horse shit. And uh, it's the exact same for this thing. If you read through the user reviews, it's like woke propaganda. It's like, shh, just get your head out of your ass and just play a different game. If you don't like what they're doing, um, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very odd. And, and I understand like, especially after a game like um, Baldur's Gate three, which, quite honestly, that game changed so much for modern RPGs where it's like there's so much choice. There is so much flexibility in everything. It's like, oh, I can go into a toilet and climb down the toilet and go to the sewer and do that. I'm like, and, it, and it's really it's weird because it's like saying because one game did this and another game isn't doing that. So the game is trash is weird, too, because it's like I am not interested in um, Baldur's Gate 3 because I don't like on a turn-based game. I don't like the combat. I don't like their strategy. And it's also overwhelming. It's like a 180-hour game and you can talk to squirrels and it's like, that's just not for me. I want more of an action RPG type of game. So this is for me. So punishing a game because it's not Baldur's Gate 3 also seems weird. Yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's hard to punish a game for what it is versus what it has to be basis the other game that you love. So I'm like, I know I've been harsh on other games because maybe it wasn't X, Y, and Z, but for this game, it's, I'm glad it exists. It's not for everybody. Totally get that. But it makes me feel like Bioware is back in their wheelhouse. And it makes me feel very happy that they're going to make a Mass Effect game. And um, that's very exciting for me. So, yeah, call me happy. Excellent. Mark? Yes, Does happy. Be Todd being happy a bad thing? Never. It's surprising. Oh, but it's never thank a you. Bad thing. Oh, it is. <laughs> I love that too. It's like, yeah, Todd's usually a grumpy grump. I'm like, yeah. nah, not this case. I love it. Okay, awesome. So, with that, Mark, we are done with what we've been playing. Uh, it's going to be, we got more games coming. I've got games actually I'm going to play very soon, which I'm very excited about too. But with that, listen to this ad. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness 
and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. All right, we move to the mailbag. Uh, we've got Jose, a.k.a. Chipotle Bear. He says, not mm-hmm. sure if you and Mark are big cod guys, but if there was a skin or two that you really love that would make you want to jump in and buy it, what would it be? Could it could be from any uh, universe or IP. So, Mark, uh, cod is a first-person shooter game, so you're not always seeing your character. You're used to... Uh, Fortnite, where you see your character all the time. Yeah. So, um, would that change your mindset if it was only you see it when you're like in a menu or maybe people seeing you to buy a skin? Um, I can I can still dig that. Like knowing that I'm playing as a skin, I think it would have to be a kind of a cool skin for me to to jump in specifically for that skin. Um, but I've been, I've been thinking about, I I've downloaded the new call of duty game. I just haven't had a chance to play it. Um, so I really want to get in as far as like what skin I would absolutely like stick to or main. My mind instantly goes to the Mandalorian happy five year anniversary to the Mandalorian today. So if they dropped a Mando skin, it fits perfectly. You're going through, you have so many weapons if they did a special event with like the Mando slug thrower or something like that, like I think that'd be really cool. Um, but like, even without that, like I think there'd be uh, like, it just seems like a good fit for that style of game. And, um, and I wouldn't mind being first person Mando. Cause then you still get like the gauntlets, you still get the gloves. You still kind of get to see a little bit of that. Mando you can see. Armor. Yeah. You can see extremities right. and weapon. Um, yeah. And you can still see the weapon, of course. Um, I just, I think that'd be badass as hell. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Uh, I mean, they have committed to doing Call of Duty on a Nintendo console. We haven't seen it yet, but if they were to take like Samus or something like that. And I don't know how that would work holding a gun or maybe, you know, there's something where her arm becomes the gun or something like that. Like, I don't know how they pull that off, but that would be another one that I think would just be really badass. uh, would be a, a Samus skin. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. It's in- It's interesting how far they go with it. Right. Cause mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I am not getting to the like cod skins because it's first person. I typically play the, the, the campaign don't play any of the multiplayer, yeah. but I think if it really reflected, like you said, your extremities and your weapon, but also impacted like sounds and like the rounds yeah. you're shooting and did some unique things, that would be really cool versus just be, um, you know, your headset and things like that, where you, you can only see it from there. So, I mean, if you think about, um, getting you in the mode for that, um, I just think that could be very cool. So I'm thinking maybe um, like I think more of like Predator. Predator oh, would be kind of cool, cool. Yeah. because you'd have like the 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 it, basically your viewpoint. You'd have like the three dots, the sounds. Maybe incorporate like an IR or infrared view. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, other than it's that, a perk. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Sick. Maybe something so goofy and weird, almost like a. This is going to get really weird because I don't know if Disney would allow it, but like uh, Buzz Lightyear, right? Oh, uh, yeah. he'd have his like shooting and like he would say his like funny phrases and he'd be able to fly and do things like that. That would be a lot of fun, too. But I don't know if Disney wants to allow that. Just like Nintendo. Don't know if they want to allow that, but I think yeah. that would be a lot of fun. So I'd be more playful with it and it would have to do that. I just don't want um the stuff to be more like cosmetic versus like feel like you're actually building an environment around your character but maybe i'm wrong i like it mark you get the next one because i don't understand this so please explain it to me barry from impact game station says todd oxtra 
He specifically said this to you because I think he knows my answer because we've talked about this a few times. Okay. Uh, are you excited for the Ironfall Invasion release date reveal very soon for the Nintendo Switch? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Barry knows when this game is going to be released. Barry has been working on promotion for this game. and ah, helping them- Good job, man. This, this is uh, okay. a little inside thing. Barry is branching out from like just impact game station stuff yeah. uh, i don't i don't know how much i'm allowed to say so i'm not going to say very sure. sorry if you were if you were like um fishing for me to release what you're working on i i apologize if i've missed that um but i i know some stuff that that barry's working on that is basically that he he's he's helping out and 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 putting himself out there for game developers and and for a, di- a few different avenues and this is one that I know he's working on and I've seen some stuff that Barry has been nice enough to share with me uh, from Ironfall Invasion. If you are not familiar with Ironfall Invasion, um, that is a three or what was a 3DS game released in 2015, I believe. Yeah. Um, and was a really cool game. Very like uh Gears of War light feel kind of um kind of gameplay and stuff. A lot of like, you know, cover and, and run and shoot kind of mechanic. Really cool on 3DS. And they are releasing it wink wink, probably sometime soon for the Nintendo Switch, if Barry's to be believed. Um very soon for Nintendo Switch uh release date. Um so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I um like I said, I, I liked the original on 3DS and uh and and jumping up the resolution, jumping up the gameplay and all that kind of stuff. Like this is gonna be a fun replay on uh on Switch, I think. Um so yeah. Barry, if you have some some fun news that you can share, we're happy to talk about it on the show. Um I'm excited. Todd, what about you? Did you ever play this on 3DS or have you, you, know- you ever I am the worst 3DS person to talk to because I'm like, oh, I don't love mobile handhelds, but I feel like a lot of games that were really promising on the 3DS were trapped on the 3DS, and the yeah. hardware is what constrained them. So to hear that games would be coming to the, the Switch would be amazing. So that games like this, there's, I think, a game called Moon, um, Samus Returns. There's a lot of games on the, the, the 3DS, which I think would look great on the Switch, would be amazing, and they don't need the new Switch 2 to be amazing. So, Barry, if you're more than interested to show up on our show, we'll talk about that. We've got some intercontinental uh, issues to happen, but we'd love to have you on because I know you have done some amazing work to highlight games. And if you're working on this game, we'd love to hear more about it. And what you can talk about would be amazing. So want to hear more. So thank you, Barry, for, uh, you know, I love cool uh, first person shooters. I just don't like like weird 3ds like controls that are not great so putting on the switch perfect for me because i've got the cool uh binbox controllers yeah so thank you barry sure. yeah absolutely so with that mark we've got our mail back done we really talked to our uh cool co-op mode uh compatriots but now let's talk about the bonus round we're going to talk about backwards compatibility but before we do that So, Mark, backwards compatibility is a weird concept because in a lot of ways, um, we didn't have it for a long time. So, like, I think of, like, the Atari 5200 or the 2600 was not backwards compatibility with the Atari 5200, which is a big system. Then we had the Sega Master System, the Sega Genesis. They were not backwards compatible. Uh, Then we had the NES to the SNES, not backwards compatible. The, uh, uh, I guess it would be what? The uh, Nintendo 64, not backwards compatible. But we did get backwards compatibility with, I think the system I think of is the Game Boy, right? With Game Boy to Game Boy Color, right? Nintendo handles have have been really, really good at backwards compatibility. Um, Straight, yeah, all the way back. Because you had... Game Boy, Game Boy Color, but then even uh, Game Boy Advance 
could play original mm-hmm. Game Boy carts. Uh, then you had the the DS line. The original DS yep. could play again all the Game Boy games. It's, I remember okay. doing that. Uh, yeah, but you know, full backwards compatibility. Uh, no emulation. Just had the two slots for for DS carts and um, and Game Boy cartridges. Um, and then 3DS dropped Game Boy cart compatibility, but could still play DS games and then emulated right. a lot of Game Boy games. Um, yep. Or not even emulated. There, there was still, I mean, it was still playing natively on the hardware. That's the crazy thing is that the, the yep. DS and the 3DS still had essentially a Game Boy inside them. It was built on similar enough architecture that that, that, that it was still playing these things natively for Game Boy Advance, which could then be compatible with, with Game Boy. And, and like, so straight back, we have this full compatibility line yeah. in the handheld market, but home console, it's been a whole other different thing. And it's, it's been frustrating to say the least. Um, so Nintendo officially announced at uh, a recent earnings call that um and 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 backed it up on twitter uh so the the twitter quote or x quote uh this is furukawa at today's corporate management policy briefing we announced that nintendo switch software will also be playable on the successor to nintendo switch nintendo switch online will be available on the successor to nintendo switch as well um Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. A um, couple of things to unpack here, but the, the compatibility, the backwards compatibility is one that I think came at a time when Nintendo really needed it to, and I think it did exactly what they needed it to do. Uh, and that is people just weren't buying Switch games like they used to. People were just saying like, this console's what seven, eight years old. I've had my fun with it. We know there's something new until you announce that it's backwards compatible because that's a Nintendo yeah. thing to do is just make it not backwards compatible for some weird reason. Um, people kind of lost faith spending their hard earned money on something that, you know, if, if you let's say this, the switch to, launched in March of next year. So you're saying in a few months, if I have to sell my switch in order to afford a switch Two, that it might not be backwards compatible. You're starting over. You're starting over. Mothership. Yeah. I'm not buying the new Zelda game. I'm not buying Mario party jamboree. I'm not buying a single thing on Nintendo switch this whole holiday season, because in a few months I might be selling that switch to try to buy this new thing. And that is a terrible position for Nintendo to be in going yeah. into the holidays. So I think they were backed into a corner to make this announcement. I don't think they wanted to. I think they had to. <laughs> they had to. They dropped, Mark and I looked at their sales. They dropped hardware by a million and they dropped software by like 5 million. So that tells me right there that they're saying that, um, yes, we expect new buyers to buy some hardware because we want it's funny because they mentioned we want everyone in your family to have a switch not just yeah, one yeah. per household we want many so it's like i get it so you're gonna have it for your kid that buy the the those but they know that a lot of the uh people that are hardcore switch fans are gonna be like well are you gonna just resell me my games on the new hardware so wa- i'll just wait until they release that version on the switch too which i'm gonna buy and I'll wait on that. So by doing that, which which you know Nintendo may do like the deluxe version on the Switch Two, yeah. which is fine, which is yeah. fine. But yeah. they, they don't want people to not buy games just so they don't play them. So it's a, it's a smart play for them to finally do that. Um, and I know people said, well, what about carts? I'm guessing they're going to do the same thing they did with like the DS to the 3DS, which just means like uh, the cart will work in your new game console but it won't work in the old one like have like a weird like tab or something like that and i think that's yeah. good enough yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. I, I i don't see there being any reason to believe that like switch 
two games or super switch games are going to work in the switch that you have right now, there's going to be some sort of restrictor or some sort, like you said, a tab or whatever. Um, yeah. Yes. To 3ds style. hundred percent. I see that happening. Um, you did bring up an interesting point though. And this is a, 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 something that my wife and I had a conversation about immediately following this news was she just kind of asked like, well, does that mean that the games will automatically look better like they do on Xbox Mm. or is, is this like something where it's, and I said like, that's the PlayStation versus Xbox camp most of the time. And we just, so the reason she was asking was we just kind of went through this whole thing. I don't know if you saw, um, they released a Lego Harry Potter, definitive edition yes for like uh what systems was that actually on i don't remember it was like a uh, new xbox gen one i think and it i mean it works like she she's played it on the Cause, xbox series because those games were originally on what the 360 and ps3 and I Wii. There, i think there was a ps4 xbox one remake oh, kind okay. of thing or like at least yeah. you know edition kind yeah. of thing um and then the the so this new one little bit expensive for something on xbox that we're we're used to smart delivery we're used to not paying for those prettier upgrades yeah just downloading a patch and i went through my whole games list because she was asking like i thought we didn't have to pay for these you know i thought that there she's like you've said that before right and i was like yeah like Mark, I think they they actually termed it free master, like a remaster for free on Xbox. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, and and I went through my whole games list. I was like, yeah, Jedi Survive or Jedi Fallen Order better, looks better. Um, even stuff like, you know, ongoing stuff like Sea of Thieves and and you know, there are a bunch of games that I just I went through my whole Xbox library and I was just like, this was free, this was free, this was free, this was free. (laughs) And like and she looked at that Harry Potter and she's like, I love this game, but I am not paying for that upgrade knowing yeah. that so many of these are free. And, uh, and I said like, you know, the Harry Potter games kind of do that. Um, Hogwarts legacy even had two editions. There's other games that, well, I- even on, uh, the PS five pro, which Sean got, which will, uh, I'll get to see his PS five pro, yeah. but apparently that game, um, looks better, but is not, like perform better because it's locked by the CPU. So it won't get like, Oh, it's going to get 120 frame per. No, it won't. It'll just look like a little bit better, maybe ray tracing. So yeah, we're in a weird spot with Mm -hmm. basically what is the heart and the new hardware allow your old games to look like. And I think the, the good part Mark is because Nintendo partnered with NVIDIA for their hardware. NVIDIA is a, a God. They are so good at their software AI up uh, upresing and all of their uh, basically they call it DLSS, which is like uh, I don't even want to say what the game name is because I'll screw it up. But I have a I have a PC and we have a a, a, a GPU that does that stuff. Uh, Xbox uh, and PlayStation doesn't have that because they're with the AMD. And because of that, they have to basically create their own software to do that, which is PlayStation is done with the PS5, which is pisser. <laughs> it's the PlayStation, whatever they call it. The P- it's basically their way to f- use AI to increase the frame rate and things like that. But Nintendo will benefit from NVIDIA with their AI software, which will mean DLSS 2.0, maybe 3.0 will work on the Switch, which means maybe the software will do the heavy lifting for Nintendo. It'll be just like, yeah, it looks better because the the, the chipset and everything is doing the work. Mm-hmm. I hope that's the way it works. But I wouldn't put it past Nintendo to say, because apparently I listened to a podcast. They said they were showing devs on the new hardware what Breath of the Wild looked like at locked uh, Breath of the Wild locked at 60 frames per second, 4K. Ooh. That's insane, right? Much. Okay. Yeah. So then you say, well, is that because of the hardware or are you doing extra work and you're going to sell people basically well, like when in, what Sony does is say, here's the Horizon Zero Dawn remaster. Is this going to be the Breath of the Wild remaster? We charge you. If you own the game, you get it for 10 bucks extra. 
I don't know what Nintendo would do because Nintendo charged people that owned uh, Mario Kart 8. They charged them 60 bucks for Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Switch, right? See, I so I don't know. That one... See, that one I don't see as like a recharge because you couldn't pop a Wii U disc in right. your Switch. Oh, absolutely. I get that. It's the format's this weird. One, if yeah. They, if they come out with Switch 2 and they say, here's Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Deluxe Super Edition HD 4K, um, then I'm going to have an issue with it. Uh, Are you okay with like 10 bucks extra? And people who never bought the game, they get it at full price. Because I'm okay with that. It's like I, saying you get a you get a benefit from it, but you know, maybe. if you never owned it, sure, why not? It depends. See, it all depends on the the effort. If it's ten bucks and it's just a new coat of paint, or it's locked in a little a better I'm, frame rate, like, better frame rate. But uh, see, yeah. knowing that DLSS exists on the chipset that they're using, yeah, likely. Um, that'll piss me off. You know what I mean? Like that, cause it, it's essentially charging us for something that's built in anyway, that the system, like they would probably the games will look that in. way regardless what Nintendo does. Right. Yeah. They yeah. would have to go in yeah. and disable that for like, let's say breath of the wild for, for instance, like if DLSS yeah. is built in to their console, they would likely have to turn that off for breath of the wild in order to make it not, look yeah. good you know what i mean like so that it's I, like the negative I'm, nelly inside I'm, of you saying would nintendo do that yeah or would they be yeah. cool with that but they're gonna so i would say then is it like if they do like hey we're gonna charge you more they have to add value versus just performance like it's we've added more courses or and i'm guessing nintendo Maybe. at this point hopefully they're saying we're not going to sell you the game you already own better. We're going to make give you new games that are better. Mm. Like, we're going to give you Mario Kart 10. We're going to give yeah. you Breath of the Wild, whatever. But now, but I, I don't know if they could do it with Breath of the Wild. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom, because they didn't do any DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. So maybe yeah. Breath of the Wild, they leave it alone. Honestly, it, it's a case by case basis for me because yeah. thinking of Breath of the Wild 4K 60 locked, I'm like, yeah, I'd pay 10 bucks for that. No problem. Yeah. Mario Kart 8, I don't know if I'd pay for an upgrade for that because it's already it's already a beautiful game. The frame rate is already, already 60. Locked, beautiful. It's, yeah. It's, you know, there's there's certain games that I'm like, yeah, I want to see that as pretty as you can make it. Do the thing and I'll pay the money. And there's other games that I'm like, you know what? I got out of that game, what I needed to, your art style was too good. Nintendo, sorry, but, uh, you had it locked in at 30 locked in at 60. I don't know if that's going to improve an experience for, for a game that I've already finished and moved on from, you know, like if, if it's not like it, I need to replay this game in 4k 60. Am I going to jump on that? And there's like certain games in the Mario franchise that I might pick and choose, do I want that to look a little prettier? Can it look prettier? Is it going to make a difference? You know, that kind of stuff. So if they're doing those upgrades, it's going to be a real like pick and choose sort of game for me. Um, but I'm just kind of hoping that DLSS is just like a thing. I don't know. Yeah. What about this? So they said, you know what? We're not going to milk you. We're going to give you a new Mario Kart. You own the greatest game. It's going to come forward. We're going to give you Mario Kart 10. Uh, uh, Smash Brothers is going to be, there's going to be a new iteration. We're just going to make this game look good and you're going to get it on your new system. Um, what about if they said Tears of the Kingdom, though? We're going to give you a special edition with new content but you're not going to get that content in the game you already own and you have to pay $60, $70 for the special edition. Like yeah. it's new dungeons, I, new stuff. I could see them doing that. Like that's a, that's yeah. a PlayStation kind of move. Um, yeah. You know, like 
play here's the prettier version of the game and multiplayer is only available on this version or this thing's only available on like you know i that that's it's a very playstation style move and it'll be the same kind of answer for the upgrade i will be very pick and choosy for that like is it worthwhile is it worth my money is it worth my time does the game look good enough the one that i already own did i skip it it you know it's 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 going to be yeah, it's going to be weighing those those pros and cons. But the nice thing is, with backwards compatibility, it's all optional. Absolutely. It's all, do right? I have the sixty bucks, ninety bucks, twenty bucks, ten bucks, whatever they're charging for this? Do I have that at the time? Do I want to spend it, or is this switch cart that I've had for three years good enough? That's cool. My my library is not going anywhere. Um. And I, I like that. I it, it, That makes me way more confident buying games now. There's still those questions up in the air. And I think, again, Nintendo has to answer a lot more questions. But I think this was the minimal amount of question that they had to answer. And they had to answer. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great move. It's and and for now. What about this, Mark? If they do say there's a, 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 a version of Tears of the Kingdom, blah, 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 should you just be able to get the DLC, any extra content, as an add-on to the game you already own? Or are you locked into having to buy a new version at $70? So basically, there's a new dungeon for Tears of the Kingdom because, hey, that's the only way we can make this dungeon work. PlayStation did that actually with um, Horizon uh, Forbidden West with their DLC. They actually locked the DLC to the PS5 version. Right. doesn't mean you couldn't play the game when you got the PS5, but but that's what I'm saying. So it just becomes like, is this like a weird one where it would like, as long as you can access the content on the new system for a minimal price, that's cool. Um, or do you say they can't charge me seventy dollars for new dungeon? That's what I'm worried about. If they say, "Hey, if you own the game, it's ten bucks extra for the extra content because you're bringing that game forward to the new system," it's ten bucks extra. That seems fair. We're yeah, saying that, it's that locked behind fair. a new edition for seventy dollars. <laughs> that seems fair. Uh, is business always fair? Definitely not. Um, Absolutely. You know. I, and that's that's it. Like I hope, I hope whatever Nintendo does, if they do some shady shit, and this this goes for anyone other than Nintendo, um, yeah, do exactly what we just did with that Lego Harry Potter, one of my wife's favorite games, like her favorite Lego yeah. game. Um, thumbs down on the upgrade because just not worth the money. Like Lego games aren't pretty to begin with. We're not paying like whatever thirty bucks for a. a upgrade visually like who gives a shit like i i, I don't know um so okay. speak with your wallet if nintendo's trying yeah. to pull off some sketchy shit with switch 2 right off the get-go like speak with your wallet just and yeah. and that goes again that for every single company just just you don't need everything if you already own it it's pretty enough make the decision for yourself and speak with your wallet yeah, absolutely. And I think with um, Nintendo going forward, I think they're realizing that they've had rough transitions in the past and having Nintendo Switch Online and their backwards compatibility working is a value to their customers, which is great. Showing us that you admit that you like us and you're not going to milk us is great. Um, I would say, Mark, uh, in the future, um, something that's a touch point to you and many Switch owners do you think they can still go forward with a, an Animal Crossing uh, perspective of saying one, one switch or console per console with like Animal Crossing is mm. even legitimate going forward, considering people have many instances of like World of Warcraft? <laughs> on their systems. Is that something they can just say, no, our systems will support 
many Animal Crossing islands on your future game. It just seems like a weird thing that says, is that a system consideration or is it just a, eh, we're going to charge you to be part of that situation? Because that seems like the one weird like thing that makes no sense to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Is that yeah, odd? I, it, oh, I've always thought that was weird. Um, any kind of game where you can't do multiple saves, Pokemon, um, Animal Crossing, like it's it's weird. It's it's a strange thing to put like that little restriction on. Um, I don't think Nintendo's going to move on that kind of stuff for the most part. Yep. Uh, that's just weird, Nintendo. And again, speak with your wallet. If you have one Switch in your house and you're like, we're not buying multiple Switches for Animal Crossing, so we're skipping Animal Crossing. Good, do that, and maybe the next one. But Animal Crossing, thanks to the pandemic, sold like gangbusters and yeah. sold many switches, ours included. Our second switch, 100% an Animal Crossing purchase. Um, like, yeah, we're part of the problem in that solution. We we spoke with our wallet, but our wallet says, give me more Animal Crossing switches for COVID to help us get through this shenanigans. Um, so... Yeah, I think we're part of the problem in that case. And I don't think Nintendo is going to learn any lessons from an outstanding sales number uh, with that. Um, So maybe this time around, maybe that's the hard lesson they learn with, you know, economics way different than they were through the pandemic. Um, Maybe the Switch 2 is a, hey, this is starting off as like one console per house because of the price, because of tariffs to import these things from Japan. Yeah. Ooh. We don't know. Yeah. I read something today. Thanks, where thanks U.S. Yeah. And the, uh, the all our US, issues. Um, yeah. Tariffs. I'm not going to get into politics on here, but tariffs might bring, I saw something quoted today that the PS5 Pro could be well over a thousand dollars. Thanks to incoming tariffs from reasons oh. from you guys. Um, yeah. Mark. I'm not to blame. I voted. Not you. Not certain you way. specifically. I know. I know. I know. In- but yeah, and yeah. I hate the fact that it, our voting would impact other countries because it absolutely does. And that's yeah. shitty. Yeah. 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 Um, now, I don't know if that would directly impact here. I don't know if our PlayStations would go through the U.S. and then come here or if we can just skip it, that. It, import it's weird because it's like, what, will- NAFTA, North America. Yeah. Free, free trade, all yeah, those things I with yeah, know, Canada. Either. Yeah. We won't yeah. worry about no. that right now. But no. what I'm saying is is we don't know in a year where the market's going to be. And Nintendo is not a company that like always is very fast to catch up on like economic yeah. times in that sort of way. So we might see a very, very different Animal Crossing sales story. Let's say if it launches in a year. Yeah. Um, because people just might not be doing that, like, you know, same COVID thing of like, hey, we're all stuck in the house. Of course, we're going to have multiple switches. Yeah, inflation is like, a weird you beast, pre- right? We're not paying yeah. $500 each for two Switch 2s just so we can play Animal Crossing. Like, not happening. Um, so there's still a lot of these questions. One question I want to ask, completely sh- uh, shifting yeah. gears from, from the, yeah. to that, those kind of sales. They mentioned Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch. They never, they okay. still haven't named this stupid thing. Do you think this is. They didn't is even give it a game mark. They didn't give it a name. Like the NSX was the name for right. the Switch. Yeah. They didn't give it a code name. I want a cool code name, Mark. What would you give the, the Switch to code name? Let's, let's do that. I would, I would call it. You know what? I wouldn't even do a code name. I just straight up release the name and say, this is called Super Switch and we're keeping the Nintendo Switch online name because we still have Switch. Now it's Nintendo Super Switch online. Um, I'd, I'd skip code names altogether. I'd just go Super Switch locked in. That's it. I'm calling it the Wallaby. There we go. The Wallaby. <laughs> I like that. I don't know why. The Honey Badger. They're not like um, Australian or anything, but I'm yeah. calling it the wallaby. Yeah. I like it. I like it. If we're going animal so, names, yeah, wallabies. Yeah, wallabies so sorry. I distracted you with my silliness. Um, uh, what was I supposed to say? <laughs> no, I, I just, does that 
are they saying something without saying something by saying that Nintendo Switch Online is still going to work with this thing? Are they saying that this is probably going to be Switch 2 or TU, as you've dubbed it? Um, is yes, Switch still the TU, be or are they, Accento, or TOO, yeah. yes. Are they, they rebranding Nintendo Switch Online? Because it doesn't make sense. Let's say if this is called the Nintendo yeah, Wallaby. That's a weird one. Yeah. Are you going to have, yes, yeah, Nintendo Switch Online on... Plus Wallaby. Please, yeah, please subscribe to Nintendo Switch Online on your new Nintendo Wallaby console. Like, it yeah. doesn't make sense. So they give yeah, you something I'm, away in the name there. Yeah, probably. I think they just feel like they're kind of trapped that they like because Nintendo's like, oh, I don't want to be the, like just the Nintendo Switch plus more. And I'm like, I think most people want that. It just seems like there's these weird people that say like, I need it to have like talons or like weird <laughs> like um like uh, you know like uh, like. I don't even know what to say, Mark, because I'm like confused. They want it to be like odd and weird and and have like these things that make it playful, but not necessarily value added that people care about. I mean, I always think about like, what did the Switch like Joy-Cons bring? Weird like, uh, you know, ice cubes and like uh, some things is like, did anybody care about that stuff? No, they want to just play their games online. So I'm like, I'm wondering quite honestly, what would the new console bring from a hardware perspective? I don't think people care, but to your point, God almighty, it's weird to that. They, they would have to do it. It's like, well, we're no longer PlayStation four. We're now low now known as PlayStation, uh, Wendigo. And we have to rebrand. That just seems like an odd choice. So I'd say probably no rebranding. I think it's going to work and it's just going to be like switch whatever. And that will be okay. But yeah, they kind of put themselves in a corner with that switch online branding. So yeah, interesting. I I do wonder like if they would just rebrand that service to like, just Nintendo online or something like that. That makes like sense, the right? Same way we have Nintendo music now, which is awesome. And pl- we can love yeah. that app. Um, but like, I wonder if they would just say like, you know, Nintendo music is now part of Nintendo online. Yeah. Nintendo online works on your switch and your wallaby. Um, please subscribe. The family of Nintendo. Nintendo whatever. family. Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo, Nintendo family, family of X, Y, Z. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, very, very curious with the wording in that, that small tweet or X or whatever the hell you call it on that platform. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting what happens, but this is good news. I'm glad they didn't just like leave this out there. I think they needed to do it. And from that mark, let's just put uh, one last spike in the ground and saying at this point, when do you expect them to actually reveal the next generation of Nintendo console? February. I think February. Okay. I'm thinking like January, because I think as long as they get all of those wonderful switch bundles for the December highlights, I think going into January, that's when they'll announce something. And I think, I think- we will. Okay. Uh, no, I, I think um, I, I think we have very similar um, reasonings behind those. Yeah, I th- I was going to say January, and I think they're going to avoid that like thirty day return window from mm. Christmas. Oh God, or the holidays. <laughs> you know, that's so like, corporate I, of you, Mark. <laughs> I know, but like it's real. Like, yeah, I don't know if you've true. ever had that. Like, I I remember a Christmas where I got an HD DVD player. Oh, boy. And very quickly they announced, you know, HD DVD is going away. And I think I saw the writing on the wall and returned it very quickly anyway. But I think it was even within that like 30 day window. If you did get something like you could return it and do all this, whatever. Um, yeah. I was a little ahead of the pack, but like, you know, switching over to Blu-ray and all that kind of shit. But like, 
I I really think Nintendo would say like we need to do this in like February or March so no one hits that like 30 or 60 day like I think it's mostly yeah. 30 at most stores. Um but if there are a few outlying stores with 60 day windows, I would even put that like late January early March just to avoid like pissing off another couple of million people that got that thing for Christmas and then it's like what do you mean dude I just spent 500 bucks on this console and a couple of games and you're telling me there's a super switch coming out in a minute. Like, no, like I, I think, I think spacing it out. Yeah. At least by like a couple of months knocks out that return window. And also I have, think maybe stops people from being pissed off. That's weird because I think of like, at this point, if you don't own a switch, it's somebody buying it that has no clue about the world of video games and have, would have no clue about the Switch 2. It's like, eh, you know, Lovely. hey, you're good for like 18 years of your Switch 2, <laughs> your Switch uh, grandson. Enjoy. So, yeah, I, I yeah, I just think it's going to be a small window. They just want to sell all their games through December and anything after that. Yep, we're going to, those games will work on our system and here you go. So that's fair. Yeah. We'll we'll find out, Mark. Nintendo is a weird company, you know. Next, I mean, we've got like uh, Alarmo, we got Nintendo Music, we got Nintendo Japan, Donkey Kong Country. I don't know what's next. Maybe a uh, exercise tape. Maybe <laughs> Ring Fit Two. You know what? I could really see them doing Nintendo Fitness. Um. We've done We Fit and we kind of sat that out for like the Switch era for the most part. Yeah. Um, but I could really see them doing something like Vitality Sensor, Sleep App, do like bundling it all in on some sort of app that also works with Super Switch. That, like, yeah, I could really see them doing a push into like Nintendo fitness, like have workout programs, um, ring fit adventure, vitality, step counter, all that kind of shit. Like I could see them really doing a push of like switch Two is not just a game console. This thing's going to keep you in shape. Here's your Apple fitness plus, uh, um, competitor. Here's your, uh, you know, don't spend yeah, money absolutely. on a Peloton. Uh, just get this and do workouts in your own living room with this um, ring and uh, you know, some bands that you strap joy con onto your wrists or your legs or something. And, and here's a pedometer that you can add on. That's also a pokey walker um, kind of like I could see them doing a huge push into that. And that's the big differentiator. Like you said, like people are looking for that gimmick. Um, th- I could see them doing that. And the, the writing's on the wall for them. Like they just released a new music app. They could easily integrate, like here's some workout tunes. I think there are like pump up tunes on me, Apple or uh, on, on Nintendo music, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Mark, I am convinced we're going to get a Nintendo clicking peripheral with switch Two down the road. Yeah, clicking okay. And being Nintendo healthier music. down the road straight up has running, walking, powering up all these match your mood playlists. There you go. Nintendo's and I know with ring fit, it was all about making smoothies switch to it's all about smoothies being healthy. We're going to be all in it to win it. Folks get in on there. You go, yep. Mark. All right. So there we go, folks. We're talking about backwards compatibility. Switch is going to make us happy boys but we don't know what else it will make us happy when they announce it. TBD will find out soon. Mark, tell people where they can find you around the interwebs. You can find me on uh, mostly Instagram and threads, a little bit of TikTok here and there every once in a while and uh, hanging out in our Discord server uh, as Canardian underscore Jedi. Excellent. You can find me at T Oxtra at Secret Friends Unite on threads and Instagram for our DMs. Check us out there and let us know if there's something you want us to talk about and connect with us if you want to be on this show. So thank you all for talking about the world of video games. We had a good time. I hope we were goofy, we were fun, 
and hopefully distracted you from the world that we all often at times need a break from. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, friends. And remember, folks, it's always better to game together. Whip it good. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.